the kingdom. I want you to decide in your heart this morning to begin to live righteously. To check your heart, to check your ways, to look at anything that does not conform to righteousness, to make up your mind, to go to do away with it. Righteousness is the way to play in the kingdom. Without that, you can't be in the kingdom. And do you know what? From righteousness flows down peace and joy. Amen. If you want to believe that, look at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 17. Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 17. The 30, 32nd chapter of Isaiah, verse 17. It says, the work of righteousness shall bring peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance for him. Now, it flows down from righteousness to peace. Amen? Amen. To have peace in the kingdom, you need right. Righteousness brings peace. Yes. Amen? Amen? Righteousness and peace. When those are in your life, then you have joy. Now, what do we mean joy? Joy is not the kind that the world gives. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. You know that in the book of Galatians chapter 5. The book of Galatians chapter 5, you know in verse 22, he said the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy. The joy comes from the Spirit. So, the kingdom of God is not me, is not drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Right from righteousness come peace. From peace you get joy. Joy is not is different from the one that is different from the one that money can give you. Joy is that is that happy, happy state that results from knowing and serving the Lord. When you know and serve the Lord, you have joy. That joy you cannot explain it. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Amen. It doesn't come by the money you have. It doesn't come by the kind of car you have. It doesn't come by the kind of houses you have. It comes from the law. It comes from the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat. It's not drink. It's what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that gives that joy. The Holy Ghost cannot live in your life if there are sin there. Amen. So you see, that joy comes from righteousness. Amen. If you have no iniquity in your heart, the Holy Ghost cannot dwell there. Amen. If you have sin in your heart, if there are lies, there is anger, there is bitterness, there is fornication. Amen. You can have the true joy that the world gives. You can't have the true joy that the Lord gives. No, you can't have it. So, you are in the church, you come to the church, you attend service. Let the kingdom of God be paramount in your heart. Carry the consciousness of the kingdom in your spirit. As a young person, there's so many things around you trying to draw your attention to the world. There's so many things trying to draw you to itself. The Bible says, the love of the world is enmity against God. You must remember the kingdom of God at every time when you are in the school. You are about your business. You are being invited to, 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 to a wrong gathering, to a wrong association. Remember the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. 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 The first thing we talked about about the kingdom of God is you have to seek it first. Yes. The second thing is not ordinances, it's not a meat and drink, it's not what it's not the things you study or you don't study. It's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three, very important, I want you to take note. The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is where? 
Or I want you to touch your belly this morning and say the kingdom of God is in me. There is a kingdom that lives with you, lives within you. By the time you are praying according to the will of God, by the time you are living righteously, by the time, by the time you, are, you, you are following God, by the time you are seeking the kingdom of God first, by the time you are living righteously, the kingdom of God lives within you. Amen. When you move to the right, the kingdom of God moves with you. Amen. When you move to the right, the kingdom of God moves with you. Amen. When you sleep, when you travel around, the kingdom of God is with you. Wherever you are, your Bible may not be with you, but the kingdom of God is with you. Amen. When you are in trouble and tribulation, the kingdom of God is within you. The Pharisees asked Jesus. They said, you've been talking about this kingdom. Talking about this kingdom. Where is the kingdom? Is it there? Is it here? He said, no. The kingdom of God is where? Is in you. You find that in the 17th chapter of Luke. Verse 21. There is a kingdom in you. Amen. When you live in the consciousness that there is a kingdom in you, you will say, I will live. If the kingdom of God lives in you and you know it, can you carry your body and go into immorality? No, no. Will you go into a bad association when you realize that the kingdom of God lives in you? Amen. You watch where you go to. Yes. You watch the people you associate with. Yes. You, watch, you watch what you do because the kingdom of God is in you. Nice. When you carry the consciousness of the kingdom of God with you, will you be afraid of anything? No. You will be bold because the kingdom of God lives in you. Say it once again, the kingdom of God lives in me. Brothers and sisters, I want you to begin to walk, walk in that consciousness. When you know that the kingdom of God lives within you, you open your mouth and speak. You will preach the gospel. Amen. When you go to your office, when you are about your business, when you are in a school, you will open your mouth and speak to the other people. You will share the gospel because you know there is a kingdom within you. Yes. You keep quiet because you don't know there is a kingdom within you. Yes. That's why you don't speak. But when you realize that this kingdom lives within me, you open your mouth and you share the gospel. You preach the gospel. You tell people about the Lord. Yes. You decide this week, after entering into this week, I would like to speak to one person. Amen. I'd like, like to release the kingdom of God in me into that person. Amen. Somebody is waiting for that thing that is within you. Amen. Somebody is waiting for the right word to hear from you. Because the kingdom of God is in you. He lives in you. He lives in you. He lives in you. I say he lives in you. So when you step out on Monday, you step out with a consciousness of what? I carry the kingdom of God. When you drive your car on Tuesday, you drive with a consciousness of what? I carry the kingdom of God. When you wash dishes on Wednesday, you're washing dishes and you remember the kingdom of God is what? Is in me. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is in you. Why are you troubled? Why are you afraid? What's that situation that is troubling your heart? Why are you cast down? What's the situation of your heart? Remember, the kingdom of God is in you. Amen. He that lives in you can overcome to the world. You have no reason to fear. The kingdom of God lives, lives, and lives in you. Amen. As I said, the kingdom of God is very paramount in the heart of Jesus. And he keeps saying it. One thing we have to prepare for is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. What do you use? We spend so many years in church. There are so many people out there on Sunday morning relaxing, sleeping in their own. They don't go to no church because they don't know anything about the kingdom of God. But you know the kingdom of God, you come to church. Eventually after going to church for that so many years, you must not leave that kingdom. You must prepare for the kingdom. As I land up this morning, I want you to consider the ten virgins again. They were all like you, seated in the church. 
They have their Bibles prepared for heaven, but some of them miss it. I am praying in the name of Jesus that none of us will miss that kingdom in Jesus' name. Some of them miss it because they were not well prepared. They didn't have extra oil. They didn't go extra strength. They gave up at some point. We are all waiting for the kingdom of God. You have to be prepared. You don't get to the kingdom by mistake. You don't just arrive in the kingdom of God. Oh, what am I doing here? No, it doesn't happen. Do you know what? When you are born into this world, by default, you know what default means? Hmm? Default. D-E-F-A-U-L-T. Now, when you buy a computer, the default setting is what setting came from the factory. Okay? So when you are born in this world, by default, you belong to the kingdom of the devil. By default, you become to the kingdom of hell. Now, when a baby is born, he does nothing, make no decision. You, by default, you become to what? The kingdom of the devil. Consciously, you have to walk out of that kingdom and enter into the kingdom of God. You, you have to prepare for it. You don't enter the kingdom of God by mystic. It doesn't happen like that. If you arrive in the kingdom of heaven, you prepare for it. It's by preparation. So I challenge you this morning. I want you to know that the kingdom we are operating in the world today is temporary. One day it will run up. One day it will translate into another kingdom. And that kingdom depends on our preparation today. Are you prepared for that kingdom? Are you prepared for the kingdom of heaven? Your day-to-day activities, are you prepared for that kingdom? Is there anyone here this morning that your heart is still failing? You have not yet surrendered all to Jesus. There are some aspects of your life that are still keeping away from Him. You say, Lord, I can worship you. Lord, I can sing songs. Lord, I can come to church and read the Bible. But, when it, I, but I don't want to touch this area of my life. When you get to relationship, I don't want you to touch it. Don't touch it, don't touch it. The word of God can speak to my business, it can speak to my work, it can speak to how I do things, but my relationship, oh, the word of God, I don't want you to touch it. No, that doesn't happen. Or you say, okay, the word of God, you can touch every part of my life, but don't touch my money. Don't touch my money. (laughs) You can make it to the kingdom of God. God is, God is looking for total surrenderness to him. I challenge you this morning. As we pray, am I totally surrendered to the kingdom? Am I living in the consciousness that the kingdom of God lives in me? Do I walk according to the dictates of the kingdom? Do I live righteous? I want us to bow down our heads this morning. Before I pray, you will pray for yourself. You will talk to God. Silently in your heart, you will talk to Him this morning. You're going to ask for that grace to live in that kingdom. You're going to ask for that power to preach the gospel, to realize that that kingdom is in your heart. If you are not saved here this morning, you don't know the Lord. You know if Jesus comes today, you can make it to heaven. And you are making a decision that, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I want to make it to heaven. You want to say, Lord, I release myself to you. I give my soul that being to you. I want to stop the sin in my life. That's wrong relationship. That's wrong association. You want to say, Lord, I give my life to you. I surrender. I become a born again Christian to you yeah. this morning. I'm willing to pray with you this morning. While we bow down our heads and our eyes are closed, if you are there, sit there, and you know that I need to make a decision to enter this kingdom, I need to prepare for it so that I won't miss it. I would like to request you to raise your right hand as I pray. Yes. 